episode 204, Are High Ticket Sales Really Worth It? You're listening to the very best podcast in the world on health, wealth, and happiness. Please remember to leave a review and share with all your friends and family. And here is your host, Lars Hilson. And it is Thursday. Uh, we're almost at the uh, exercise episode, at the weekly exercise episode. And welcome to the very best podcast in the world, your only source in the universe for personal supremacy through health, wealth, and happiness. Now, um, when I started this podcast out, uh, I think I've repeatedly mentioned it, but I'm uh, risking that you've heard it all before. I'm going to give you the brief version that this podcast started out as a persiflage or a big fuck you against all of those motivational people producing videos in their Bentleys with their cool sunglasses in their penthouses telling you that your life could be so much better if you only bought, downloaded their free ebook upon which you were lured into a, uh, let's call it a trap for a lack of better words, right? So uh, then you had to sign up for a course to get even more motivated. And the entire uh, charade was essentially one big drug addiction. Uh, a heroin addiction, <laughs> even worse than that, uh, in that, you know, they were raping your wallets and, you know, getting you the next fix would cost you another X thousand of dollars. And since you, after that course would absolutely be successful, why not take it out on your credit card? You know, you're going to be able to pay it back next month because, and here comes the jingle, high ticket sales. That seems to be the solution for everyone, but it's not. It's the solution for the dude trying to sell you the BS in his borrowed Lambo in the house that he uh, went into for an open house and took some pictures of a sleazy mansion which, hey, you know, you never see them there again, right? You get this one picture of them in the house at that pool. And it's like weird, <laughs> you know, the Lambo, I don't know, a year later, it's gone. You know, well, not a year later, a week later, it's gone. You know, it's never to be seen again. And if you check the license plate, it's a fucking rental. Well, anyhow, long story short, this episode is an analysis of high ticket sales versus the opposite low ticket sales. I don't know if there's a word for it. <laughs> Anyhow, um, where do we start? Well, we start with housekeeping, like everyday views, my own, blah, blah, blah. Uh, sharing is caring. If this episode is interesting for you, um, you know, share it with the world. If you know someone in particular that perhaps fell for one of these con artists and their scheme, uh, or is about to, <laughs> you know, send them, uh, share this episode with them, uh, through your favorite podcasting app that you trust and listen and are hopefully, uh, on, of course you are subscribed to the podcast. If not pause now, hit the subscribe button. There you go. Good job. Uh, now you will be informed and your life will become <laughs> significantly better. And no, you don't need to pay for anything. There you go. Okay. Now that we have that out of the door, let's get started. Many, many moons ago, I was uh, visiting one of my first clients. And uh, this person, yes, I'm very private about it. No, I'm not going to tell you about it uh, because I'm private about all of my work and clients, most importantly. Uh, anywho, uh, so don't ask. <laughs> so uh, this guy was very interesting uh, in that he was a banker. And uh, anyhow, long story short, he was, you know, from working himself, uh, well, not the American dream because it wasn't in America, but, you know, it was another country's dream. Let's put it that way. Anyhow, this dude, you know, came out of nothing and was a very successful banker. 
Um, I think in parts even for the rich and shameless. But there we go. So uh, you know, we were talking and you know going back and forth, and he brought up this example in that he said, you know, well, to become rich, you know, you need to make two dollars out of the one dollar you have, you know, and then multiply it every time you can. So he gave me this rather crude example uh, of buying, you know, a uh, bowl of strawberries <laughs> at, the, at the market, uh, you know, or at the supermarket, let's put it that way. And then you go to the upscale supermarket and you sell the strawberries there in front of the door in hopes that, you know, nobody's got any. And then, you know, you put up a decent sized stand and you have one little basket left because you bought it for a dollar and you sell it for two. And there we go. That's the secret. Next day, you're going to take the $2, buy two, uh, you know, baskets of strawberries and do the same thing. And so you can theoretically multiply uh, or double your money every single day. And I was rather impressed with that because for the longest time, the challenge for me was probably uh, out of purposes of, uh, wanting to prove myself because I didn't really have any interest of proving myself to others, right? It was like, um, it, it kind of came with the, uh, with the ordeal. Anyhow, I tried to, you know, get my products and services to the highest bidder, which usually, you know, I was gunning for rather high ranking, very high profile clients. Uh, but I think for me, it was more the challenge of actually placing my products and services there rather than, you know, underselling myself to, you know, mom and pop operations who, you know, weren't really appreciative of the internet and e-commerce and all of the shit I was doing back then. Anyhow, so, you know, it was a very hard sale uh, and corporations usually got it very early on. You know, there was a communications person sitting there and they were like, yeah, you know, hey, there we go. And so I was always after well, not always, but, you know, I was, uh, interestingly enough after the high profile clients and it took me ages to figure out how to close the deal, how to get it done, how to approach the right people. In fact, I don't even know how to do that today. Most of it was luck to be perfectly blunt. Uh, but, um, it was interesting talking to these people, interesting, seeing how these corporations work. And I had proved all of my concepts with the quote unquote low ticket sales, right? Um, I have one friend for whom <laughs> I uh, did a search engine, search engine optimization campaign back in the day. And, uh, it was a local business and all of a sudden, you know, his business, uh, not that it was doing bad, you know, but it, this gave him the push over the edge to a degree where he called me up uh, three weeks later and said, we have to, we have to stop this. Now <laughs> I'm getting so many calls. I can't handle it anymore. And I have to turn so many people down and, uh, that's not really what I'm about and so on and so forth. Anyhow, <laughs> it was an organic search engine campaign. So it was very difficult to stop it. But, you know, interestingly enough, those were all of the concepts that I had done. I've proven the point in the, uh, in the small environment and, you know, long story short, uh, I went then with these proofs, proofs of concept or proof of concepts, whatever, um, to the higher realms, to the higher echelons and tried to pitch it there. And, uh, I don't know. I ended up being successful somehow. Uh, no idea how I did it to be perfectly blunt, but why am I asking the question whether high ticket sales are worth it? Right. Um, here's the thing, this strawberry example is so fucking simple that it's amazing how easy it is to make money. Uh, and you know, it's no uphill battle. <laughs> the battlefield is rather flat. You know, you go to the, you, you just buy a product, uh, and sell it for, uh, double what it's worth. Ideally, you know, make it one and a half, even that. Uh, and while I was fighting this uphill battle against corporate powers and, no, we're not going to, well, yeah, we're going to pay you, but we're only going to pay you in 90 days or 120 days was the worst example that I had when I wasn't at that time in the position to say, okay, go fuck yourself. You know, it was an interesting experience. They had the power and they knew it and they were abusing it. 
so that you know no small uh, consultants or whatever could actually land the deals because you know hey you do the job you want to get paid you don't want to get paid in 120 days right and uh, where am I going with this anyhow uh, high ticket sales high ticket sales are always going to be an uphill battle and if you can afford it which I later could it's totally fun to well you know try and place your product somewhere where it's totally 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 annihilatingly difficult to pitch someone or something right so um but you have to get to that point first either you have a nine to five right and you're you know going uh to um i don't know uh, you you uh want to do a side hustle you know that's something that's one option number two you sold the strawberries <laughs> and uh uh, yeah, <laughs> that example just will always stick with me. Uh, you've sold the strawberries, uh, you know, and that's that those are basically the two options that you have, or, you know, somebody's shoving money up your ass. That's another option, right? Anyhow, um, we're getting back to the question, are high ticket sales worth it? And the question is yes, <laughs> you know, because it's challenging and it's totally cool to have all of these prestigious brand names associated with your name, right? You know, uh, if you've worked for fortune 500 companies, you know, and you have their name in your credentials, that's pretty fucking expressive to, uh, in, in impressive to a lot of people. Right. And so therefore, you know, not only are you impressing people, but it's a, it's a door opener, right? You show up to a client, you say, hey, I've worked for this and that and the other Fortune 500 company. They're going to be like, oh, really? That dude must be good or that gal, you know, whatever. And um, so, yes, high ticket sales are worth it. Definitely, because it's challenging, it's fun and it's rewarding, both from a self-esteem perspective. Hey, because, you know, you've been helping all of these big dudes. And, uh, number two, it's very interesting, uh, in that, um, it gives you those credentials, you know, which makes your work in, or later on easier, you know, to place your products. Uh, you've got the street cred, you know, you've been playing with the big boys. So, you know, everyone should hire you right now, what these people that are trying to pitch these high ticket that's you know really one of the biggest meanest words out there uh, are trying to pitch you is that you should immediately gun for the high ticket sales and the strategy is just wrong which shows you that these people haven't understood anything in life you know uh, at the end of the day they're showing off their bentleys and their penthouses and you know whatnot on people's money <laughs> other people's money and no not the high ticket deals they're you know displaying the thousands of dollars that people pay for their courses and that's what buys them their bentleys not that they're good at closing anything really well a lot of them are i don't know you know about too many details but i've read plenty of literature that a lot of these people are on a very thin ice of being called uh, you know, con artists, because, you know, they motivate you to a degree, then this motivation kind of subsides, and then you have to get the next course to get motivated again and again. It's a downward spiral, really, until, you know, that point comes where they actually, and this is proven, tell you, hey, you know, take this course out on your credit card, because you're going to be closing high ticket sales very soon. And then you can pay back your credit card loan debt, whatever. And uh, that's, I think, really what I wanted to put into perspective with this episode and hope that I will prevent at least some of you from falling for these wallet rapists. In that sense, I uh, hope you have a good rest of your Thursday and uh, we're going to be back tomorrow for Exercise Friday when we're going to be talking about how to change your life in one year. So, peace out. Uh, leave your hands above the blanket. Very important advice. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Peace out. Bye, folks.